To be perfectly honest, I'm terrified of this carriage. It's super heavy. So I've got to take that whole thing apart and clean it. What's up, guys? My name's Kevin Toppenberg. I've been working to restore a 1935 South Bend lathe. It has a 15-inch swing and a 6-foot bed. And the restoration's been coming along great. If you haven't seen the prior episodes, uh, they should be in playlist um, or just search for uh, under my channel. Uh, we're missing a carriage. And the carriage is made of the saddle and the apron. And this time we're going to work on getting the apron all installed. We've got an exciting episode. I'm going to teach you lots of things not to do. One such thing is don't hit your machine with a sledgehammer. Why would I do that? Um, but we got it fixed and uh, it's coming along well. So hope you enjoy. If, if you do enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe so you can know when I come out with new videos. Thanks. The time has come to work on this carriage. I've got it flipped over onto its back, and I think there's nothing more now to do than to start disassembly. This pack of flat washers, almost looks like a clutch pack of some sort, uh, sets up in there. Now, right here for this push lever, there was a set screw and a spring, and I'm pretty sure there's a ball in there. I'm gonna have to flip it over to get the ball out. So there are still some gears inside here, because when I spin that, this is working. So I haven't figured out how that part is going to come together. Oh, the other thing is, there appears to be a taper pin. I took out four bolts that look like this. They screw into here like this. That allowed the top to come off of it. This is uh, right side up. This is looking at the top flipped upside down. I've got this gear in here. I've taken out this top gear. It drove out with force from the back. That goes in there like this. In order to get this gear, there's a taper pin right there. That's the small side. That's the big side. I have hit on this, I have put penetrating oil, I've heated it with my torch, and it does not want to budge. I may have to just leave this in here and just clean it as is. It looks like it's mechanically in good shape. When I look online at how other people are taking apart um, the apron, and this is the apron part of the carriage. That's the saddle, together they make the carriage. Um, other people, this has been a separate piece and it's like the gears they have more accessible here in the back instead of everything being down in there in a pocket. So I don't know, that must be a, an improved design or something different. A little bit at my wit's end. I have an idea for a new sci-fi movie. We're gonna go back in time and rather than kill Attila the Hun or one of the Mongols or Hitler, we're gonna find the person who invented the taper pin. We're gonna take him out. Just kidding. This second gear in here, as I've been turning it upside down and around, trying to clean some of the paint off, this gear actually just fell out. So I put it back on so I can see how it goes. That shaft in there is pretty short and you can just kind of wiggle it and it comes. there's enough clearance at the end of the shaft for it to come out. Also, this um, oil tube comes in here Press, presses in there. I'm gonna wiggle that out. On this shaft here, I initially tried driving it that way and it went in and it was not long enough. I mean, it was it hit the far wall before it came out. So then I had to do all sorts of shenanigans to get it pushing back this way. Finally was able to get it down enough that I could bring a brass rod in that way and I drove it out. Okay, I was able to get this shaft out by driving it with a soft blow. And that just, it took a moderate amount of force. Now, I think that collar that those forks around, I think will stay there. All right, so there it is. And I'm gonna have to see how that comes loose.
and there's that, that's the front part. All right, I'm trying to get out that slider rod. I've got the set screw off. There should not be anything holding it on that shaft. I have to show you in a minute what I'm doing. I'm wedging the, the arm forward. Me and this part are not friends. Boy, it is fighting me. I did not see what is holding that on. Son of a gun. All right, there's the gear. The forks are towards the front. The front of the forks. Oh yeah, yeah, I went to three pieces. And there's the other two. Well, it looks like there was a side set screw and that was the problem. So, how was I supposed to have gotten that side set screw to know that it was there? And why would you put a side set screw? There it is down at the bottom. Guess I could have gone at it from this side here. I tried to find videos for people doing the same thing. Tried to look on the internet, could not find it. So, going to see if we can get this brazed back together. I wish I would have known better, but I don't know how I could have known better. Why would you put two set screws on something that doesn't have to move very much? I've drugged a burr up on there. I'll need to clean that up. Let's see where we're at. If you can see down at the bottom there. Lots of gunk, and that's supposed to be like an oil reservoir, and there's a drain right at the bottom. So I'm gonna try to get all that goop out of there. This really is the bugaboo. Um, seems like it ought to be fairly simple for that taper pin to come out, but it does not want to move. I think this bottom one is just gonna drive out. There was a set screw underneath that's been removed, so it should just drive out, but if I do that, and then I can't get this one out, I think it would be difficult to put back in. This worm, I can't figure out how to get it undone. Um, it, on some of the smaller south bends that I see on YouTube, it looks like this is a threaded nut and it unthreads. Um, so I should be able to put some sort of a clamp on here and a clamp on here and go in opposite directions and loosen it. If you look here, there is that on this side and that on that side. So I sure hope that that's not that they screwed something in, then put in a set screw, then ground off the top. I may just leave that alone too. It's, it's not hurting anyone. Uh, and I think I can clean up around it. The other thing is this handle here. That's got another taper pin. And I think that taper pin brings off the top handle and then the rest of it goes out the back. I made this little bolt and I ground it to a little nub, and I'm gonna put that in there like that, and take this big C-clamp. On the other side, I've got a nut so that there's a place, so there's no counter pressure on the other end of the taper pin. That's gotta be putting a bunch of force on there. What in the world is keeping that stupid pin? Well, my nub is still there. Pin has not moved. I'm kind of afraid it's gonna bang out of there. It's a mess. I broke apart 
Still have two gears I can't get out. I'm giving up for today. It's a new day. Let's see if we can bring some order to this ugly chaos and grime and dirt. Eesh. got these uh, first pass using that gasoline to get off all the grime last night I took this part that I broke to my welding class and my teacher tacked together the parts um, and did the brazing on the outside with TIG and then I came back and did brazing on the inside and it, it was hot and the class was over and I needed to to go so we had it in the oven which is about 500 degrees for 20-30 minutes but it was still too hot and I needed to leave so I decided to put it in this old welding glove and hot, and fold it up as a welding blanket so that it would slow down the <coughs> the cool down time but now it's kind of stuck in here I think it melted part of the parts Ugh. so I'm trying to get it out. I'm kind of anxious to see how this is going to have turned out. Yeah, see it's stuck a little bit. I guess there's some cloth in there. Here's this gear. I guess it would be a gear fork that I broke into three pieces. He tacked it together here, here, and here. So I took a burr, burred it out, and then I did the brazing in there. And uh, brazing turned out to be pretty quite fun. Then all of the cloth inside stuck to it. So I'm going to work on cleaning that up. So I got the outside of it cleaned up. A couple issues I have to work on. You see down there there's been some drippage so I'll need to open that hole up and then we'll need to retap it. Same with this one. And here's going to be where the real issue is, is to get that board out to diameter. I've got this flap disc on my angle grinder. I think that looks really good. I got those holes, extra glob of brass out and tapped it. Just have to bore out that center now. I've got these parts all wire wheeled off camera. I went back and forth a long time about what to do about this pin that just wouldn't come out with driving. I've decided I'm gonna drill it out. I hope I don't regret that. I just I would like to be able to disassemble this part both for cleaning, for getting access to what I think is a wiper in there. And um, I have a taper pin that I can replace it with and a taper reamer. So here's uh, crossing my fingers. All right, I got that drilled out. Here's the remnant of the taper pin. I'm sitting here deciding whether I want to do the same thing on the taper pin for this top gear. If I took this top gear out, then I'm pretty sure I could get the bottom gear out. And then I would have the thing fully taken apart, but there is a risk to doing that, that I may mess it up, may not be able to get the taper pin back in there, or that the taper pin I get back in there doesn't stay, you know, and comes out and jams and breaks a tooth. So I think that the risks outweigh the benefits of trying to get that out. I don't think it's going to improve the mechanical working of it. I don't think it's a real high speed turning gear. And then if I got that out, I still wouldn't have this worm gear out, which I'm convinced that there's a taper pin that was driven in and then ground off. So I think it would be quite a deal to get this out. And so I think overall, I'm going to say this is done as far as disassembly. So my next step now is to put some Bondo on it and start getting it back together. I have a first coat of Bondo on here. We'll let that harden up and come back and sand it. The more I do this, the easier it gets. I just don't stress on it so much. I uh, just know I have to do several coats. Uh, I really like thinning it down with that acetone. I think that helps make it smooth. All right, I've got this repaired. I have my shaft polished up. 
we got that uh, brazed and repaired from the three pieces that I foolishly broke it with my hammer. Uh, went down to Knox Maker Group and we bored out the inside. My friend Billy did most of the work on that because I got distracted by something else, but it was 90% set up and 10% boring. Boring as in when you uh, open up the circle. And so that fits in there quite nicely. I'm happy that we got that back going. That looks a lot nicer. I'm gonna work next on this. I wasn't able to wire wheel in here just cause I couldn't get in here. So I'm gonna use a little Dremel with a sander and try to see if I can get that stuff cleaned up. All right, I got the old paint off. Along the way, it ended up I ended up polishing a lot of this cast. Now that Good morning. It's a beautiful spring day. There's a few buds coming up on my tree. And I may never say never, but I may be down to my last part that needs sanding. So, isn't that exciting? Okay, I got it all smooth. I don't think I have to do another coat. I'm gonna put black as my primer or my first coat this time. While I'm painting this here, I wanna talk about this casting. There's a cool YouTube site, a Windy Hill Foundry, and the guy there takes, uh, I'm blanking on his name, he takes patterns makes up the sand mold, pours the, the molten iron, and comes up with some amazing things, uh, making parts for people. So I've come to appreciate uh, how difficult it is, because he'll work really hard and get the whole thing done and open up the, the mold after he's poured the iron and everything, and it will have failed. It won't have done some part of it properly. So I'm all the more appreciative of this piece. This is all cast in one piece. It's a pocket, has a front and a back and a slot down the middle. You know, so try to get all the iron to flow all the right places, not to leave any voids. And then, you know, to be all structurally sound that it can then come back and have it machined out and get to its final shape. It's crazy. Here it is painted, paint's dry. I didn't have a second coat on there with the black. I got this little star handle painted, which I think is a very neat piece. I got that nose piece there polished up nicely. The buds are showing up on the dogwoods. Yes, I think those are dogwoods. The cardinals are singing. Beautiful spring day. All right, with all that sanding, you can see that a lot of the metal shows through here. I kind of feel like uh, I'm using the enamel paint as a light grade body filler, but it is smoother. Blue on that, and there, that done, advancement wheel. I've decided I'm gonna leave that star handle and the half nut handle black. I think we're getting improvement, still irregularities. So this is a pretty neat product. I got it at Lowe's. 180 grit fine from 3M. It's like a sponge. See, I go like that. But then it's got the grit on the surface and it's just perfect because I can get in here and these curves and um, just think it's worked real well. You can see that there's still some low spots there. I think every time I do this, 
uh, the next layer fills those in a little bit more. I did it with this because uh, I was trying not to get down to the metal surface. I did a little bit in a couple places here, but I think this is looking good. All right, let's get some color on here. I have noticed there's a missing part right here, and that's the thread, the threading dial indicator that tells the lathe operator when to engage the half nut and keeping the thread position in the right synchronization between the lead screw and all that. They usually have like a number on it and you gotta clamp it in right at the right number depending on what pitch you're doing. So I'm either gonna have to try to find one online or figure out a way to make one. It stormed like crazy last night, thundering and raining, just coming down in sheets and booming thunder. This is April, April showers bring May flowers. Looking forward to it. When I bought my lathe in the, uh, in the auction, right beside the lathe, there was a toolbox. And often um, parts for the lathe will get put into the toolbox, so that's why I bought it. When I got it, it really just seemed like it was full of junk. So I was just now going through everything, trying to clean it up, and found a couple of things. These are um, old tool holders. I think those would be pretty good. There's a lantern post. That went with it. What especially makes me happy is I got this um, a fixture plate. Um, I th that, and that fits my my chuck so I think that's going to be excellent. Is this not crazy? I'm driving over towards Asheville on Highway 26 so I'm kind of up in the mountains a little bit. Look at this snow. So this was a rest stop, an overlook. It's pretty. I better shut this off and get back on the highway. I'm gonna start putting this piece back together. So this is the back side. I don't think any of this is really gonna be visible, but it's always nice to have it as nice as possible. This little oil cup's kind of ugly. I'm gonna go hit it with a wire wheel and let's see if we can get that looking nicer. Well, does not look better. It says Gitz Bros Manufacturing Company CHI. I have an unhealthy fascination with taps. I just think they're the coolest thing ever. Taps make it so easy. Love it. Look at the bottom of this plug nut. Got an M with a vertical stripe down through it. If anyone knows what that means, drop me a comment. Kind of cool. I think I have a problem. I couldn't handle the little uh, ripples, so I hit it yet once again with sandpaper. When am I gonna just leave well enough alone? I put in another coat, put two caps of acetone in there to make it really thin so that it would run and fill in. And then I used this to smooth it out. All right, here's what I had hoped to be my last coat of paint. I, I started doing some fine 180 grit paper, kind of knock the, the surface off the top, try to make it smooth. Like right there, I can feel it being rough. All right, I'm getting ready to put back. This had a taper pin in it before. Uh, I happen to have inherited some taper pins and taper pin reamers. So I've got this. This is a number five reamer. I've got to ream that out so that this pin will then go in. All right, here I've got this. And the place where I drilled out, it's a little bit too wide there. So the tension to hold the taper pin in is probably not going to be very much on this side but I think I've got a good amount here that I can drive in to get a good wedge there. I'm gonna put it on and I guess hammer it in, mark how much I've got left over, hammer it back out, cut off that end, then hammer it in again. I've got that taper pin shortened, hope it's the right length. Successfully installed. Now there is just the waiting of the 20 years 
and for the next guy to curse me for having used a taper pen. It's just a little bit below the surface there. It's a little bit below the surface there. I'm gonna wash this felt that goes in for the next step. I'm happy with that. That's gonna go right there. For our next step, this piece goes back in. That's gonna go there like that, and it's gonna mesh with that gear. Now, before I can do that though, this gear is gonna have to slide onto that, which means I need to flip this over, which is where it may get a little bit tricky. This gear slides onto that with the shifter part facing forward. And again, the gear fork, and I think I'm gonna be able to put the gear fork on after this gear is installed by putting it in and then swinging it sideways. That's what I'm looking at down there, trying to get that all lined up. Huh, how did I get that out? It's, it's because this has a bevel so a t the far side and the near side are down or have a larger radius than the middle. And so it's not wanting to slide over that. When I put this down in here, you can see the two keyways and that will line up with these two keys. So that just kind of sets in there. Then there's this seat that that needs to go in right there can start to go down and see how it's going down in there. But when it does that, it starts binding up against this edge here, which is, you can see to be on the same thing. See, there's quite a bit of difference between the center and this outer part. So it looks to me like they installed this first, then the worm gear, then they put this little pin in here probably to seal the whole thing. Cause I, for the life of me, I'm not sure how I got it out. I must've just forced it. Good news, nothing broke. There's a little shiny spot right there. So that's where it's scraped across, but it doesn't seem to have done any damage. It's a little bit shiny. So I think no harm done. So this, bar slides forwards and backwards to adjust the gear fork. So that looks good. Now, on this slider bar, there's the place for the set screw, and then to the right of it's the infamous uh, hidden set screw that needs to go in. Let's get a set screw in there. All right, now I'm gonna get some pliers or something to put a little bit more torque on that to get it tightened down. Then I'm gonna come back and try to see how to get that side set screw, which I overlooked before. Just for someone else's reference, if you look right, right in there, you can see it moving when I move that slide bar. That's where we are supposed to get access to that other set screw. It caused me so much grief. Blankety, blankety, blank. That's all right, it's all good. Okay, we've got it all back together. Slider moves in and out. When it's forward and the lead screw would be coming in here and that turns this, which then turns that gear. And if it's forward, it's engaged with this gear train. So see if it's moving down there. And when it's back, it is not engaged to that weird gear. It's not moving down there. But that changes it between powering the translation of the carriage down the ways versus putting the power up to the cross slide. Okay, so right where this slider goes in and out on the under surface, right here, there's a, an indentation, like a detent. And then I think there's another one as well. So we got this little spring like that. And this little ball bearing, it's not a ball bearing, it's a little steel ball. Push that down in there, push the spring over top of it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. My next part is to put this shaft in. This is a short little shaft. 
that just comes in and sticks out. The gear will just rest on you, rest on there. And then I think the secondary gear is what's gonna hold it in place. There's a raised edge, and I said that that faced the back and that it just went in there and, and there was enough clearance to get the gear down and then slide it on. All right, that spins freely. Okay, now I think we're due for the last gear. All right, I've polished up this shaft, taken out the, the felt wiper, cleaned it, washed it with the gasoline, got all the, the dirt and debris out of it. So the gear, uh, we'll have the small gear facing forward to engage, engage with this other one. All right, that's pretty loose. No, 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 no. All right, I'm gonna to put together this clutch. So we've got the outer part and the inner part and they move separately from each other. But there are times when you want to bind this to the outer part and that seems to be done with this clutch. So the clutch alternates between two kinds of rings these, which have no connection in the middle, but do have connection in the outside, and that goes into the little, it's a six-pointed star, and they slide into these little holes around the outside. So you put, I think you start with one that does not, that connects to the center, then the one that connects to the outside. I think the idea is that when you squish them together, it will tie them, but if it's loose, they'll just slide. This nut, has a hole in it and there's a pin right here. So that's gonna tie that together. And then my handle and shaft are gonna come through from the front and screw into that. I've got two screws, one here and one here. Pretty sure this big one goes on the outside. This threads are kinda dirty, but I don't think I have a die to clean that up. All my plates fell out. As I turn this nut, the whole unit wants to rotate. I think that's where I used my spanner wrench before. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put in these to tie that together. Okay, so from there, then I can hold on to this outer part and hopefully get this thing tightened. Hmm the clutch is not tight and the clutch is not tight because I don't have the handle on. Now I can squeeze that tight then I should be able to tighten this nut. It's a sequence issue huh? So what I'm doing is I got this which tightens up the clutch which then binds the outer part and the inner part together but if I get it super tight, then I can't turn it. So I'm just having to kind of watch when this thing, when this part here starts spinning, then I tighten it up a little bit more. And it seems like as I get this inner nut down more, then I'm able to tighten the outer part more. I think ideally, if I had gotten, been able to run a die or something over that outer thing, so it could have gone on easily, I think that wouldn't have to fiddle with all this. Okay, it looks like that's the way it's supposed to work. Just beating the heck out of this paint job that I've done. I'm gonna have to touch it all up here. I think I have one more thing to go in. Two more, I gotta put this wheel and then I gotta put the half nut in. Okay, I've cleaned out the oiler, or the oil wiper in there, I washed it. All right, now, this, I think comes in through the back. This thing's getting heavy. Comes just like that. And then my handle will go on. I'll get that in there. Then I will put this in here. All right, now let's put the nut on. All right, that's moving the gears. Let's try shifting it the other way. Don't 
quite understand how all this stuff works. Um, I tighten that up, I can't back drive it, but I can forward drive it. So that just must be a way, it just must not be able to be back driven. Still don't understand how or why you would want to use that clutch or when you would not want to have it. Future Kevin here, it's Easter today. You like my colorful shirt? I wanted to talk a little bit more about why the lathe has that clutch and uh, how it's actually a good thing. On my little lathe, if I want my carriage to move, there's only one way to do that, and that is to engage the half nut. That then clamps down on the lead screw, and as the lead screw turns, it goes back and forth. The problem with that is, is that over time, it's going to wear out these teeth, and it's gonna allow there to be a little bit of slop, and that can be a problem at times. The larger lathe has a different way of doing it, and if you notice here, there is a slot. And let me show you what that's for. This little piece, which normally rides up inside there, this little piece goes right there and it goes back and forth. So as this lead screw rotates, it's going to turn this part. This part is then going to transmit the force into that worm gear, thus you have force transmitted that does not wear out the teeth. So that's a, a positive thing. So this one has two possible ways that it can move down, it can go back and forth on the waist. Number one, through the worm, worm gear. Number two, through this half nut. So this half nut, I think you use that when you do single point threading. And so you're gonna do that sparingly. This is gonna be the most of the time, but because you don't wanna, I think either use them both at the same time, that's where the clutch is gonna come in. So you can either engage or disengage this drive mechanism. So a little complicated, but it's actually a, a much better system than that one, which is more likely to wear out. Last piece of the puzzle would be what keeps this carriage or apron from just sliding willy nilly if it's not uh, if it's not engaged with the lead screw, and that's where this part comes in. This one is tied into this mechanism, so this is going to be rigid based on that, and then that part is going to engage with this rack. And I guess just this is more rigid and less likely to wear. I guess that's the rationale there. But that's how that works. So let's jump back and keep going with our restoration. And the last thing to do is the half nut. I don't break it in the meantime. Yeah, that looks stable. You know what, I think I'm gonna take a break here. Be a good place to stop. Seems stable. We got invited over to some friend's house to visit with some people visiting from Bosnia. And as the sun went down over the Nolichucky River, it was quite beautiful. Recharged my batteries. Let's look at this half nut. We've got each of these pieces. And I took these and I put them over on here. And I can't feel any wiggle at all there. I don't think there's any wear in there. So I think that looks good. Let's do the other one. I can feel just a little bit there, but not much. Not much. All right, so these two pieces, this one is going to go down. If you see there, there's a little uh, indentation there. That's where this goes. But I don't think it matters either way. But what that's going to do is that's going to kind of lock out. When this lever, which is the knob, it pulls in the front to, as far as transferring the power from above to down below, when they're putting the power think up above you don't want the half nut locked is what I think the issue is. So that's going to go on there like that and see there's a pin there that's going to fit into that slot and it's going to go under that dovetail and then the other one, the other one's going to go there like that. Then this dovetail then I need to come back and I realize that this, this spring is supposed to be underneath there so that if this thing comes off loose, it'll still hold those clutch plates down in their slots and not let them come out. And I'll probably do that off camera. Decided to try painting that black. I got that side, a removable dovetail, I guess what we call it. I got it, went ahead and put that in. Birds are singing in the trees. 
Dogwood blossoms are out. Beautiful morning. So I've got it all assembled, but in the process, I gouged off a lot of paint in little areas. So I'm gonna come back and touch that up. All right, I got my work area here cleaned up just a little bit. I knew I was gonna scuff it up a little bit, but I scuffed it up a lot. It was even setting it on those boards. I'm debating whether to paint over this part the same way as I have painted over that part. This is a non-rotary shaft. This part moves. The longer I look, the long more spots I find. Okay, I decided to go ahead and just put another coat on there because there was enough areas that I was afraid were not gonna look right through the clear coat. I just wanted to make it uniform. And while I was at it, I got to thinking about these machine surfaces that were here and here and around there. And uh, I was worried that they might start having some rust since they didn't have any rust inhibition. So I decided to just paint all those. Now I still may have the issue with that, with this and that, but I like the, the shiny silver of that. So I wanna keep that. I also touched up a little bit of paint uh, black here and I decided to, to paint the part where someone's gonna grab it with greasy hands. The next thing that needs to be done is this oil retention cover. There's a pool of oil. This is turned upside down currently. There's a pool of oil that sits in here and it would drain out of this spot if there wasn't this pool. And I think that's going to then bathe this gear as it, as it rotates. When I took it off, the cork is all broken down. I've got this replacement cork. As I'm cutting this out, this feels like rubber. It says cork material. Now, I think the original really was cork. I don't know if there's any sort of laws about Something says it's a cork material. Does it actually have to be cork? Probably actually will do better. I also don't want this leak and I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. So I've got this Permatex gas, silicone gasket maker and I think I'm gonna smear that on as well. And I'm sure that I will find out if I did it wrong when it leaks oil. Assemble parts while silicone's still wet. Finger tight until it begins to squeeze out around the flange. I guess I'm only going to do it on one side. I don't know if that's the right thing or not. I got the bolts through. All right, I just got that lightly tightened. Wipe off the excess. All right, then I'll tighten up the rest later. All right, I need to put this oiler on. And I showed that before. I'm going to put it on right here. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more black on here. A lot of places it's kind of looking thin. But I did touch up a little bit of that black off camera. Now I'm gonna put in the oiler. This is a little oil tube that goes from the front, comes around and drips. Again, this is upside down, drips into this little tray. Uh, the diameter of this is 257 thousandths. So um, I'm gonna use a 250 thousandths, which is quarter inch, just to make sure that that hole is opened up a little bit. I can see it about an eighth of an inch shy of the surface. When I flip it over, I'll try to see if I can wiggle it, maybe grab some pliers and push it forward. And the last last thing, and then this will be done, I'm gonna wait when it's tipped over. There's two felts. Um, there's a, a hole in the front that brings oil through and then it drips into this tray. And then from here, it goes down into, I, th I think, the top of the worm gear. I'll put those in and then it'll be done. And here it is in its finished glory. This is gonna be the first of two parts of doing the carriage. Um, this took longer than I thought to get the apron. So I'm gonna have a second part where we connect it to the saddle and then get it mounted onto the lathe. So that's gonna be it for here. And uh, I'll put those little 
Wix uh, in off camera. So I think it looks really good. I'm happy about it. I'm anxious to see it on the lathe itself. And I think I'm gonna put the clear coat after I get it on the lathe. Uh, that seemed to work pretty well when I did it for the gearbox. Okay guys, here she is. It's good to see the hard work coming together. I'm really excited that this is done. Now, the devil is always in the details. Um, when I went to edit this video, I had about three hours of uh, footage, and I always feel a little dishonest when I cut out all the parts where I struggle, but I kind of have to do that to make it watchable. But for anyone that wants to uh, actually see how a particular part went together or just to see how uh, it really went, I have going to put out like a behind the scenes or a full unedited version. Uh, the link to that will be in the in the description. At least for now, I'm going to have it so it's not listed. You have to click it there because I want the uh, the one that's a little bit more watchable to come up. All right. Thanks, guys. Thumbs up. Peace out.